Hi everybody and welcome to the latest episode of the NSL's podcast. I hope you're all keeping well and as of again our show sponsors, this show is brought to you by Manscape, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscape offers you precision aid jewels for your family jewels and the Game Boys. We've all took advantage of it now. Do you know what I mean? It's it's cracking, it's a cracking deed. And I've it well the focus on intelligent functionality and incredible comfort grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower four point oh has now launched all over Europe and features wireless charging, a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents and comes with an additional guard size 1 to 4 to fine-tune your trim. And thanks to our advanced skin-safe technology, you can now feel confident shaving your balls. Again, the Scottish people on point there. So join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code CELTS. You can see it on the podcast as well at manscaped.com and the link will also be in the d- description below. And before we move on as well, for people who are watching, especially on YouTube, our subscriber base is growing every day. So get on that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the wee bell and you'll be notified when we go live. And as always, we'll keep the show rolling. This is the End of Sales podcast. I'm joined by show regulars, Anthony and Francis. How are you? I'm very good, Stephen. Glad to be back on. Uh, it's uh, been another good re- weekend result-wise for the boys. So, yep, looking forward to chatting it over. And yourself, Franny? Oh, I could say a wee bit tired after a long drive today down to, down to South London, but we'll, we'll power through. We've got good things well, to talk about. You look like you're put up in a nice hotel room there and a, a lovely retro nah, just, jumper on yourself, just a, the, the it's just a travel. It's just a travel lodge, mate. It's just a travel lodge, but I have got my Manscaped kit away with me, so we'll be using that ah, see. this week. <laughs> got to get yeah. it tidied up for Saturday. <laughs> you got so, product placement there, Franco. <laughs> <laughs> silver, silver Island saw but look, is, we'll, we'll start again with um, the match against Aberdeen. Sold out Parkhead, it was wonderful to see, and... I think we'll have to touch upon first, Anthony, the, the, the two captains, Scott Brown and Cal McGregor, the touch and tribute to Purdy Hall, the legend himself. And also, I mean, the, I, I watched it on um, the, the stream digital pay-per-view thing that you have to pay for, and sadly TV beforehand, they did a fantastic tribute, love, some lovely stories by Jim Craig, that type of thing. It was, just, it was just beautiful to see, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I mean, I was at the ground uh, relatively early yesterday and, you know, see, sort of seeing the, the crowds gather and, uh, you know, it was a brilliant sort of little sort of procession of uh, supporters on the Celtic way. And like you say, Stephen, a lot of the tributes, they played a lot of those tributes up on the big screen as well. And the highlights of Bertie as a player, highlights of him connecting with all the fans, etc. And there was obviously some lovely quotes on uh, about, you know, his ex-teammates and just every everyone connected with Celtic have said about him over the years. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was a, a touch of class. Um Scott Brown coming back first time back at Celtic Park uh, in opposing colours. Um, and I'm still getting used to that. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's quite it's it's a strange thing to see. But you know he he uh, he brought on a wreath uh, for Aberdeen and obviously Callum uh, did it for Celtic and laid both in the middle of the pitch and it was it was a lovely tribute and he got a you know a, a fantastic uh, moments of applause as well. So you know it, it, you you could be here uh, you know for the rest of the time uh, dedicating stuff to him and it still wouldn't be enough but you know I thought it was handled as it always is uh, with a touch of class yeah well put and come to yourself Francis I mean as, as Anthony rightly said it was a touch of class and I, I think as well before the match the song his song so heal heal the Celts are here it was yeah. basically him leading out the team one final time and it was just it was just nice wasn't it especially for the yeah, family who attended too yeah, it was nice. Personally, I, I never seen it. I actually was. I went to my uncle's to watch the game, and just due to circumstances, he's just been a wee bit busy. I never actually seen. I seen the start of the game, but never seen any of the the sort of a lead up. I've obviously seen Scott Brown and Callum McGregor coming out the tunnel and that. But yeah, it was it was good to see. And I mean, I say good. You would you wouldn't have expected anything less. To be fair, it was uh, yeah, it was a nice touch and stuff. I, like as you know, I went through to the the service on the Friday. Took my dad through just. That was kind of my dad's era growing up and stuff, and that was some of the stories for that was absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and that was that was nice as well. And obviously, when he was brought down the Celtic way and they started singing the Celtic song as well, that was that was a nice moment as well. So it was and a it was a nice few days if you can if that's the right term consider what you're actually talking yeah. about, Stephen. It's a, it's a nice few days celebrating the Celtic legend and the Celtic yeah. icon, isn't it? The guy who who's going to be remembered for all his storytelling, has a wonderful footballer winning the European Cup, Lisbon Lands, and may he rest in peace. And our thoughts yeah. and prayers are with his family and his wider circle of friends and Celtic Football Club. But we'll move on to the game itself. 
Celtic against Aberdeen, sold out as I said at the start of the show. And Anthony, for me, it wasn't a flashy performance. Now, obviously, we'll get into the goals and stuff as we always do, but just a kind of summary of the performance first. And I kind of described it as like a dogged performance. There wasn't really any frills or. It was Aberdeen were sitting in. They were obviously trying to hit us on the counter. I was actually quite surprised at it, to be honest, because Stephen Glass is trying to get his team to play out from the back and stuff, but didn't really see that much. So the, obviously, change of tactic coming to the parkhead and stuff. But what was your overall take of the game? Yeah, I think a dogged performance is a pretty fair assessment, Stephen. I think um, the, these games, especially um, with the likes of Aberdeen, they're, they're always up for, for, a, for a fight. And, mm. you know, they... They, they, like you say, they they'd maybe set up a little bit differently, but I think um, on the whole it was it was a bit of a scrappy game. But funnily enough, actually being at them, it was quite a good game um, to be at. It was um, I wouldn't it wasn't even necessarily end to end with chances either, but you could see that everyone on both sides, to be fair, they were you know they were obviously given a task to do, and everyone was doing their best to try and and stick to it. Um, and it was funny enough, I just said to my dad about five minutes before the second goal, I says that we, we very rarely seem to get a little break of the ball now and again <laughs> in the penalty box. And uh, yeah, lo and behold, probably the the most bizarre uh, match winner um, I've ever seen at Parkhead, you know, but rebounding off uh, off Callum Shin and into the, into the net. So it was th- these type of games, but quite similar to the one at Pataudry, uh, to be fair. Uh, you know, Celtic Aberdeen games are either, you know, you know we either turn them over by... You know, four or five, or the, or it can be a, a day like yesterday. Um, but just so many games coming up, and it's just that sometimes you know the results take precedent over the performances. And um, it was just important, obviously, with the fact that you know Rangers had had a, a win at um, Livingston as well, which you know their their record isn't really much better than ours at, um, at Livingston. So it was important just get the three points, and then we move on uh, to next uh, next Thursday against Hearts. But um, yeah, but as I say, it's not what wasn't a, a performance for the for the ages. Not one that will be on any Christmas DVD collection anytime soon. But uh, yep, it's one of those days they all count. Uh, as you, everyone counts, as you say. And come to your, yourself, Francis. I mean, Anthony already alluded to the fact that arrivals across the city they picked up a, a win at Livingston. Now I've seen all the stuff going around about what happened <laughs> in that game. Like David Martindale thought he was Pep Guardiola and pe- playing triangle passes and. Going at them and all, so I don't, I don't know. Obviously, tactics yeah. change from game to game, so I'm not going to go into that. Managers decide who the team is and decide how to play. But focusing on our game now, and it, it was a dogged performance for me. Obviously, the physical battle side of things, Aberdeen always bring it. They're always up for a fight, and we've seen that pretty much from the start. That was Joe Hart getting clattered as well. But before we get into that, what was your take on the performance? Much similar to ours, or do you have a wee? Different, yeah, I would say, no, I would say very similar. It, it did, you could tell that we'd gave a lot on Thursday night, and I think we think that maybe impacted a wee bit at times. We like we had a lot of the ball. We were we were confident and comfortable on the ball. It was just maybe in that final third. Sometimes we just we lacked that wee killer pass for team team. But I think the team they, they never panicked. It was just they stuck to the game plan. They seemed to believe in what they were doing, which I, I found encouraging. It was you seen the way the team were playing. They were they seemed to believe they will create that chance and obviously like you talked so with the goal it was it was actually a great pass for James McCarthy that then obviously mm-hmm. leads on to the goal and stuff. So it was nice to see like like obviously them sticking to a game plan. Aberdeen have ov- obviously looked at the Livingston model and tried to sit in and set like it has been known that we have struggled to break teams down but I, I felt like we actually we dealt with it better and the fact that we did stay calm we, we almost were at a walking pace at times and we'll look, just try and come and get it off us in. And they were almost inviting Aberdeen out and not lumping balls in and trying to force passes. It was everything seemed like nothing seemed forced. So it was yeah, it was it was a dog performance. Like you say, it wasn't a, wasn't a classic. There was good good moments in the game and things. Yotto was 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 brilliant again in spells and stuff. But yeah, I think we I think we deserved a bit of luck that at Callum McGregor got. And it was like you said with the physical side, it was a very stop start game, which maybe contributed uh-huh. to the type of game it was, Stephen. But like Anthony touched on, it was the three points is all that matters. In like December, you play a lot of games, so if we go through December just scraping the three points, I'll, I'll kind of take that. To be fair, yeah, no, hundred percent, and I think it's right. Every win counts now. Three points, like yeah. with ten games from now until January, or just uh, ahead is of it, January. Is it, is it, uh, no, is it not about nine, eight or nine or something? It's quite a lot. Or is it, uh, well, no, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's quite a lot anyway. It's, 
it's still a hectic schedule, but we'll, yeah. we'll move on to the game. It's, move on to the game itself, Anthony. And the first kind of thing I want to talk about is the Joe Hardinson at the start of the game. I watched it on TV is obviously different from the atmosphere you get around Celtic Park, and I'm guessing <laughs> a lot of fans were when they seen Scott Bain getting warmed up. They were like, "Oh no, 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 no!" <laughs> but even be- even before that, when that was all getting considered, I've watched it back three or four times. You see the replays on Twitter. For me, Christian Ramirez t- takes Joe Hart from behind. Joe Hart caught the ball clean. He was ready to do his trademark sprint out to the edge of the box, kind of get the ball away quick, and he just got clattered. Now, if you look at the Kyogo incident, Anthony, on Thursday when the penalty kick got awarded, when he got took out by their goalkeeper, which is quite rightly so, looking back on it. But do you not think there was, should have been some kind of action took against Ramirez? We've seen, uh, it was Clancy, wasn't it? Giving some yeah. baffling yellow cards to players. Surely that should have been one. Yeah, I, not far be it for me to stick up for, for Clancy. I think it was just perhaps the, because he, 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 I mean, he, had his, he didn't have a good game by any stretch of the imagination. I'll, I'll stick up for him a little bit there in the fact that it was the start of the game and it did come from a, a bit of a stramash. You know, everyone's sort of easing themselves into the match at, at that point. Um, but yeah, we were all definitely, there was a sharp intake of breath in the stands, you know, not least for myself when... You know, you, you, I don't know how much they, they showed you on the, on the highlights, but Joe Hart actually got up uh, as if he was down, saying to yeah. that, that he was ready to go, but then he actually went back down again. Um, but at that moment, he actually started clutching his, his knee. So it, it, we weren't sure, first of all, you're worried about, is it maybe concussion? And then obviously after that, it's it's more to the point as he perhaps injured himself. But, you know, thankfully, uh, you know, he stayed on. He didn't have a, a hell of a lot to do after that. Um he did have a great save, um, actually, just be- not long before the penalty, uh, but he just put one round the post with a, a really good save. Um, apart from that, like I say, he didn't have much to do, but it's uh, far more comforting as a supporter knowing that he's between the sticks than uh, <laughs> just any other individual, shall we say. Well, that, that, that's very true. And come to yourself, Ronnie. I, I get what you're saying, Anthony, but I'm going to disagree if I'm going to throw a wee bit, of, <laughs> wee bit of thing in here, a wee bit of spanner in the works. For me, that challenge was it was excessive force, and it's, it is kind of endangering the opponent because you're coming from behind them. You're kind of taking them on the, the shoulder, kind of neck area. And one commentator described it as Joe Hart kind of got body shock. I've never seen a body shock injury before on a pitch, Francis, but mm-hmm. it looked like he took a lot of time to decide whether he can continue playing. And I'm just thinking the yellow card should have sufficed in that moment. I, I, I totally understand your argument, Stephen. And the weird oh, thing, here we go. Is, here we go again. No, no, but I think the weird thing is, if that's maybe thirty minutes or so into the game, I think Ruben is getting booked. I think Anthony's bang on. Just saying, it's, it's the start of the game. I would like if Kyogo that. I would. I would mean Kyogo doing that to their keeper early doors. Just a wee, a wee nice to say. Look, I'm got. To, I'm every cross ball. I'm got to be here and stuff. I know it was more than a nudge, and and a way I've not got an issue with the striker doing that to an extent. He's He's maybe he maybe knows it's early in the game. He's got to get away with a free one, and and essentially nearly paid off in the fact that Joe Hart nearly for a, t- a period we thought Joe Hart was going off injured. So it was maybe in a sense he's got he got a freebie and and maybe got a reward out of it getting Joe Hart off the park. But obviously, thankfully, it didn't happen. So I think it's a weird one. One of the ones where later on in the game. I think Ramirez is Ramirez is getting booked, but because it's right at the start, I I don't think it was, but I I, I do think it was a booking. But I've absolutely zero issue with Ramirez doing what he done. I've just like absolutely contradicted my argument about five times there. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, You'll be getting stutter sitting on that fence, for like, Jeez, jeez, oh. <laughs> but I I no I, I said no issue with, it, but I, I know where you're coming from. Aye, but look, again, it's just one of them things in the game itself that Aberdeen Aye. do bring the physical side of things. And Aye, we'll touch upon the stretching he was doing after it, was it not? Oh, it was, wasn't it? Him, high, him high kicks and all. Like, I, one of them, I was like, you're all right, you're all right. You don't need to do that. <laughs> that was enough to know you were all right. He made, he made them bunny hops look easy. I'd be on the floor. But like, come, come into the actual the goals itself and in the game, the gameplay leading up to it. And I'll start with yourself, Francis, the, the Felipe Yada goal. He's five goals in five games. We've spoke about it before. We need to press the button and sign him. So we won't get into all that <laughs> this, on this podcast. It's well publicised. We need to sign this guy on a permanent yeah. deal. So get it done. But five goals in five games. It was a fantastic bit of play. One of the only times where we really opened up Aberdeen. Turnbull with a lovely kind of caress ball into Cal McGregor's path. He tested it down. He found Jada. Jada finished. And it, it was a it was a good team goal, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was a nice goal. And, like, 
it was nice movement from obviously McGregor and and Jota because a lot of strikers would have run to the front post, but he just he done a wee sort of them just step back and all that just opens up all that space because then the Aberdeen players are all running to defend the post and Kyogo had actually done that run a few times and stuff, but Jota just struggled to pick him up in the first half and things. So and it was just it was a nice touch and nice finish. Yeah, it was it was a good team goal and I think it's actually six and six, but still it's. What what's good to know with Yacht is he's obviously on a an ice wee run where Kyogo's not really con- contributing really with the goal scoring, so we're getting guys stepping up. I mean Kyogo's still doing everything else that he was normally doing. It's just mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't think he's scored in about two games or something. It's not something I'm gonna be worried about, but it's it's nice to know that you've got goals elsewhere and stuff that it's you need to be taking the pressure off your main striker. So uh, uh, it was good. It was another another uh, positive performance for Yacht. And like you say, yes, it's like subscribing to your channel, you've just got to sign Zot. Z- eh? <laughs> it's the two things you need to do. <laughs> subscribe to their channel and donate a pound every time you subscribe. Oh, we'll get the Well, <laughs> <laughs> But look, Anthony, I mean, Francis made a great point. It takes pressure off Kyogo scoring the goals. And Jada's, what, six and six now, so you cracked him in. I thought it was five and five. And as I said, the Turnbull pass for me made that move. I thought it was a fantastic pass. That McGregor already controlled it and took it in a stride and just played that simple ball. And the finish, that for me, is what Posta Coldu is looking to do every time we attack. But it's going to come in time where we will punish the team again, like them 6 nils we've done earlier in the season. But what was your take on that goal? Uh, yeah, just like yourself, it was really great great bit of play for Turnbull. That's what we know he's got that in, in, in his catalogue. He's just he's a terrific player. I, I, I can't really praise David Turnbull high, high enough sometimes. I'm a, I'm a massive fan. Um, and it's good seeing him coming back into forum as well because he had went off the boil a little bit. But um, And especially yesterday in, in the type of physical game that it was, um, it, it didn't hide. You know, that the, that was maybe one of his criticisms at the start that in these more physical games, he, he does tend, to, he was tending to sort of disappear a little bit out of the game. But that finger can't be pointed at him yesterday. I thought he, was, he played very well. And like you say, it was a great little uh, pass in. And Jota just does what Jota does. He scores goals. He, you know, he can play football. He's a handsome laddie. He, can, he looks like George <laughs> Michael. He can no doubt sing like George Michael if the uh, if the Christmas adverts are in to go by. Uh, so yeah, he's he, he's just loving life at Celtic, and we're loving um, having him here. And yeah, absolutely. Fingers crossed, we can get that deal over the line. There's one thing I do want to talk about. Obviously, it's a wee subtopic before we move on to everything else in terms of the game, and that's Maggie Johnson. Now, for, when he came on the European game against uh, Leverkusen, I had to remember how you were playing. Yeah. I just thought, I know he's come back from a long layoff, and he just didn't look his usual self with the pace with his tricks. And again, in the, when he came on against Aberdeen, just that it's not clicking for him. And I've seen him getting stick, Anthony, on Twitter. People kind of alluding to the fact, can he play football? Is he a football player? So it's, I know that's madness to say, but people obviously give him grief because he's injured most of the time when he plays for Celtic. And you said Jada can do everything. He plays football. He looks like George Michael. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's loving life at Celtic. But the workload he has playing there de- week in, week out, three, whatever, three games in a week, three games a week and a half, is still a heavy schedule. And for me, Mikey Johnson, at the moment, actually, isn't quite the understudy that we need when I think we need someone better quality what would you say yeah it's it's just one of those things where you know obviously there won't be any chance for any more recruitment until until January obviously um there's not really anyone else like you say that could Kyogo potentially could play out on the on the left um obviously he had him out wide and he's not really a left winger though is he he's um you know, he's he's more a left back, I would argue, or a, or a wing back. Um, there's not nothing to say that he couldn't do it, um, but obviously, Jota is the, the the main man at the moment. And yeah, like you say, if anything was to happen to him, then you would imagine it would be Mikey Johnson that would that would take over. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's one of those players you can see he's got all the talent in the world, but he does always kind of look a little bit sort of on the wafer thin side for me. It, it, you, you want him to do well, obviously. And um, when he did, he did have a couple. He had a, a really good cross yesterday into Kyogo, and it, it just got bought it just right at the last minute. And he'd, he'd done everything right and taken the, the defender out of the game. So 
he's maybe just needing that wee break that will maybe spur him on because you know we, he has had had little golden uh, periods of form before, um, but like you say at the moment it's maybe just not coming off for him, um, and I, w- I wouldn't have imagined. Well, but I haven't said that there is a lot of games coming up. There might w- well be um, opportunities for him to to start, but he has had a lot of chances before. So like you say, it may well be that he's. He's got to prove himself to Ange Postecoglou sooner rather than later that he can be relied upon, not just for forum, but uh, for staying injury free as well. Because mm-hmm. transfer window coming up, no doubt the manager will have a lot of uh, ideas or, or players he wants to identify in certain positions. And yeah, the, the left is probably where they are a bit sort of thin on the ground at the moment. So if Mikey Johnson wants to cement a place in the team or at least a place in the in the squad. Um, he's got to, you know, he's got to take these opportunities when they come. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right to say about the transfer window, Anthony. I think he's the latest player who's meant to be signing for us. Again, rumours is a, a player called Rio Hatati or something, a, a left-sided yeah. player from Japan. He could play in multiple positions. So, again, if he comes in, that could spell the end of Mickey Johnson. We don't know about that, but coming to yourself, Franny, I have supported Mickey Johnson. And I remember earlier in these podcasts, I have been saying that He's skillful, he has pace, he's got trickery, and he can score a goal as well. But I can understand why people are kind of being frustrated with him now. He's coming onto the pitch, under a new manager, and for me, he's not quite showed his worth yet. I think that's all, from from both of these, all fair arguments. And like you say, it's any sort of youth player coming through the ranks, you you, you do give him probably more time. You want him to do well because... It's you can relate to the types of players and stuff. It, it, you almost feel like it's like we've said it's like your wee boy or something, just making it in the first team. But there's there's no doubt in Mikey Johnson's talent. He has it, he has got it there and stuff. He has got the tricks and and things. But it's it's like we've always said. It's just that can he stay fit and like Anthony alluded to with the transfer window coming up. If Mikey Johnson wants to be at Celtic and wants to be a big part of this, he's got. I mean, he's obviously got to be given a chance, but. He has obviously featured the last few games and not really, not really done great. Or not for me, he's not really grabbed his opportunity. I, sometimes it's hard, especially games like Saturday when it stops that. It's it's hard to really for that type of play to get into a game. But if Mikey Johnson really wants to be a part of it, he could save us some money in the, in January. And maybe we can invest that elsewhere if we are looking at the the sort of the left wing area. If he if he can step up to the plate, it, it can save us some money. So. It's one of the, I, I, I'm not too sure if it's now or never for him. I think he might get the rest of this season. I'm not saying we won't sh- maybe look to strengthen in that area in the January, but I, I, I think if he's still struggling by the end of this campaign, I, I sadly can't see a future for the guy itself to be on that. I mean, football is that the sort day of is vicious one. cycle, really, isn't it? Because ah, you, you have the, the, wingers similar to straight. It's, it's all about confidence and mm. and you know getting getting a run of games. And if, if if he's getting a run of games, but he's not feeling confident, ah. then that's going to show in the pitch. And it's you know it just it, it can be a bit of a vicious cycle. I mean, I've, I've seen Mikey Johnston in, uh, uh, light up games. But one of the first games I took my wee boy, he, he was man of the match. Um, that day it was a game against Dundee a couple of years ago. So, like we say, the talent's there. He just, um, but yeah, like like every he, like every other player at Celtic, when a new manager comes in, they've got to they've got to raise their game and make that um, place in the team um, their own. Because yeah. even going back a couple of years, the the two 0 game at Ibrox with Edward and Johnny Hayes scored. It was absolutely brilliant in that game, playing mm-hmm. it in left mid. They actually set the goal, but it's it's probably hard for him as well because he's looking at Yota eh? and Yota has Yota has been brilliant and he's coming on going. God, that's the level I've got to get to, to get, get a chance in there. And if you've not got a lot of confidence, if you're not really playing with confidence, it's, it's got to make it even harder to try and get up to Yota's level because we are, we'll be comparing. It's not fair to compare him to that, but we are. That's what you do. It's essentially you're well, coming on to replace him, so we've got to, we're kind of got to try and compare it to him, which is again not fair to Mikey Johnson. It's the benchmark. Uh, and yeah, it's, no, for no, me, no, anyway, no, it's. No, a- it's unfortunate that it is for him, but again, if something yeah, want to reach yeah. the levels in European football, you that's the type of player that needs to be. Yeah, stick with Jada. He's for me, he's going to become world class. He'll develop into a world class player, and whether that's a Celtic or another big big club within the top five leagues, it, we're, we're yet to know. But he is a fantastic talent at the moment, and unfortunately for Mickey Johnson, fellas, football is a business, and Celtic can't afford to be carrying someone paying him probably a good wage to be injured and not putting his weight. And as you said. If he doesn't step up to the plate this season, Francis, I, c- I can't see a future for him either. And 
just to, obviously just to move on from that to the penalty kick that Aberdeen got. I'll come to yourself, Anthony. Now, for me, when I've seen the penalty, when I've seen it the first and second time on the replay, a bad has stuck his foot out. And you, you know you know yourself, when you give these referees, especially in Scotland, a decision to make against Celtic, nine times out of ten, he's trying to swallow <laughs> he's trying to swallow that whistle because he wants to give the penalty kick. And what's in the back? My grand, I was watching with my grandfather, and he was adamant straight away it wasn't a penalty. And me and him had a wee bit of an argument about it. And I was like, if you give these officials <laughs> officials excuses, Anthony, they'll take advantage of it nine times out of ten. What what was your take on it? Sort of much the same, to be honest. I, I, I can. It's one of those ones. I mean, Clancy couldn't get the, his whistle in his mouth quick enough. You know, that's what one thing. But by the same token, I don't think it was a penalty kick. I, and I've I've looked at it numerous times. It's one of those ones. I can understand why it was given, but I just think if that's a penalty, then you know, I, I put it this way: for for the, all the contact that there was. The, I, I can't remember the, the Aberdeen player's name now, but he, uh, he, he flung himself down as a, a yeah, that's um, uh, Francis. He, he flung himself down as if he was Neymar. I mean, it was it was quite <laughs> pathetic. Um, like you say, you, you, you are giving the referee that option, but you know, for me, it, it, there wasn't enough to, to merit that that sort of level of uh, of performance um, for, for, from Bates. But having said that, Abada. That for the for the rest of the game, you know, there was shades, especially the first half. Him and uh, Tony Ralston worked did work well together, and his speed was causing the, the defence like a, a lot of issues. Um, perhaps similar in, in, to, to Mikey at the moment, he's probably he, he knows that there's uh, he's obviously had a flying start, but we've got James Forrest now sort of really going through the gears and getting back to full fitness. One of the things that he's probably that he's got in his locker is the fact that obviously James is not fully fit yet um, and you don't want to risk you know he's not, and he's obviously now the, the wrong side of 30 as well so you don't you, you can't realistically have him in every game especially when he's not 100% fit so both players will probably be used sparingly um, over these next eight games a bad I would imagine will probably feature more in the home games rather than um, away because I, I think at home you bigger pitch you, just, you have that more opportunity so um, hopefully Abada can almost play his way out of this little spell he's going because he's, he's not by any stretch he, he didn't come on he didn't play great when he came on on Thursday night I think that was maybe a little error on Angie's part but yesterday he, he huffed and puffed and he did he, 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 he never shied away from looking for the ball which is what I'll always give him credit for um, but you can see he's, he's, he's not quite hitting the heights of uh, of his early season for him, but hopefully the fact that he's still going to be there and given opportunities, he can maybe, uh, you know, just start to get him back in his rhythm again, because um, with, with all these games coming up, we need everyone fit and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's actually quite interesting you bring that up in terms of a bad Anthony. Um, it's form. For me, it's been disappointing in the last three or four games. He hasn't hit the heights he done. Obviously, you're going to get that when you come into a new club. You're going to be flying. You're going to be buzzing at Francis to play every game. He scored seven goals and assisted seven in like oh, 10 uh, games little, little in, in, ten, in his first kind of cup, a couple of starts for selling of, of the 10 appearances. But he's dipped off. And as Anthony said, Forrest, for me, albeit he's 30, 31, he should be featuring more. I, I get where Anthony's coming from. Obviously, sports science kind of dictates a lot of who's playing and who's not playing. But in regards to the penalty, then obviously give your opinion on a batter if you want to. Did you think it was a penalty kick? I did it first. See, in real time, I did it first. It looked like a penalty. and So that's where I'll, I'll maybe defend Clancy a bit. I think it looked like a penalty, but then obviously with the benefits of replays, you can see, I mean, a batter does put his foot in, but he clearly pulls it out and, and baits and bites the contact. And I don't know if any of you caught sports soon, but Kenny Miller summed up great by saying, I bets it. Bates invited the contact and made the contact, so it's a penalty. And I'm like, well, how does that one actually work? How, how is that an argument for the penalty? So, I, so I, in fairness, I will defend Clancy a bit and say, I don't, I've not really seen it from his angle again, the referee's angle. So when I'm looking at it real time and I'm thinking it's a penalty, it's, I, re, I reckon the referee's got to think the same. But obviously when you see the replays, it's for me, it's not a penalty anyway. But yeah, I think... And, I, feel, I did feel sorry a bit for a bad as well because, like, 
like we're saying, he's clearly not playing with a bit of any confidence and stuff now. And then giving away penalties is not going to help it either. No. He's, just, he's probably just trying, like Anthony says, he's never hiding for the ball. It's, that would be more of a concern for me if he was actually not playing well, but not really looking for the ball. He's still looking for it, trying to get on it and stuff. So he's obviously back trying to do his, his defending side of the game to help help the team out. So And then obviously gives away the penalty. And he's probably just thinking, this is the last thing I need to know the way I'm like playing, but mm-hmm. yeah, hof- hopefully he can play through it because, and then like he must know as well that James Forrest is probably going to be number one choice going f- like going forward and stuff. It's, it's, he's got to, if James Forrest is turning up, he's got to be. But I think I know you're saying obviously James Forrest should maybe play more, but it has been a long layoff he's had. And then I know we have mm-hmm. said the has not played great lately, but the fact that he has contributing a wee bit is probably helping. He's, he's for his back end. We're not having to rush him. Same with Julian. We're not having to rush him back. So the the performance of the players is helping injured guys a wee bit get back. So yeah, just hopefully a bad I can can come through because like his his pace and directness is as an asset to have. But one of my biggest concerns, it, it doesn't seem to shoot. Isn't it? Like he used to always shoot quite early. Like the one that necessarily gets now. shots, but it just it doesn't seem to take shots on now. And I, I, I just wish he would start shooting, but then that's pers- could be a confidence thing as well. He's obviously scared to balloon one over the bar or scuff it wide as well, and that's probably not going to do him for his confidence. But yeah, I think hopefully it does play through it. And I've not, you obviously get the wee bits on the internet and stuff that folks that like having a pop up saying he'll just not do. But I think in the main, he's getting support, which is which is only right. They, they understand the guy's only just turned 20, he's came over for. A different country and stuff, a whole new culture, young boy. So I think in the main, the vast majority are, are understanding of his situation and knowing that he's not a bad player. He's just gone through a wee spell. Mm-hmm. It's funny how football footballers like psyche works, isn't it? It's not as if Celtic have had a slump in form. It, it's just nah. on an indi- on an individual basis, he does seem to have this one bump. But as you said, James Forrest coming back, and it's it's a plus point for Celtic. It, it is definitely is. He can learn from players, I guess. No, I mean, he can 100%. learn from Forrest. So he's 20 years old. Use his head like a sponge. Ask Forrest yeah. all the questions yeah. that he needs to ask. And he'll, he will improve. And I'm pretty sure and confident he'll come back again and start scoring goals like he did when he first came in. And another player, Anthony, that Abada can lean on and learn from is Captain Cal Mac, Mr. Cal McGregor, who goes game after game as like the unsung hero for Celtic. It's, at some point, he, sometimes he does that work and doesn't get recognised. The game against Aberdeen there, he was, for me, everywhere. He was tracking back, win the ball, trying to start attacks, probing passes, and he got the, he got the luck of the press, didn't he? When it, the yeah. ball smacked off him and went into the net, and it was, it was quite funny, the goal, but every goal <laughs> counts. But the influence of Cal McGregor this season, obviously after losing Scott Brown, the mainstay, captain, the quadruple winning captain, just every honour you can imagine. McGregor stepped into that role, and he's grown into it. You can see the respect he gets off the players. You can see the players going to him. Him and Joe Hart are always speaking to each other. And watching him, as he's like a silent leader for me. He leads by example and other players follow. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely spot on. He's just got grown straight into that captain's role um, absolutely perfectly. Um, Stephen, I'm just deli- I was delighted that we got him in the captaincy role because it, it kind of hopefully staved off a lot of interest from England because, uh, you know, as we all know, there was lots of uh, who wouldn't be interested in having Callum McGregor in their team. He's just an absolutely terrific player. Um, but there is there are players who can have all the talent in the world, but when they get given that, that sort of leadership task, it can be too much for them, and that doesn't make them bad players by any stretch, but some people, players are just not suited to it. Um, but I think we can safely say Callum McGregor's not one of those players. He is... Um, He's absolutely fantastic as Celtic captain. Just the, even the way he conducts himself um, off the pitch as well, the way he handles the media. Um, you obviously perfect example being obviously the way obviously he's he's dealt with questions uh, the last little while about obviously Bertie and his uh, influence at Celtic. And you can just see that um, it's you know it's through the generations he's he's got that respect. And um, yeah, I think we're, we're we're lucky to have him as captain, and um, hopefully he's here. For many more years, lifting uh, plenty of silverware um, above his head, just like his predecessor was. For for games like against against Aberdeen, the, the dogged performance, Franny, 
it's vital to have players like him because he keeps a calm head. I've never really seen McGregor lose his temper, albeit he might get involved in a wee scuffle, but he's usually the one pulling the players away. And it's he gets a he takes advantage of the press and the post the he wants to do, gets the goal from that. And if that shows one thing, he's definitely banned into what Posta Cogley wants to do, which bodes well for the rest of the team in terms of banning into that philosophy. And he, he, he's just, he epitomizes Celtic for me. He's a Celtic man through and through. He's been there, come through the academy. And as Anthony said, for me, he'd walk in the most teams in any league in the world. Oh, 100%. 100% like he's, he's an eight, eight and a half out of 10 every week. And I, and I think he's sort of guilty of his sort of a performances every week. It's like, he puts in performances like Saturday, you know, like, well, you, you don't seem to get necessarily blown away with it because it's, it's you're just what you expect, which is a wee bit unfair on him. You're sitting going, ah, well, that's what he does. At the end of the day, it's one of them. And I, I just, it, like you say, that gets a goal off the press, which obviously, if the captain's doing that, then you hope that everybody mm-hmm. comes along with him. So, like you say, it's setting an example and stuff. And I, he's an absolute cracking player, just so comfortable on the ball, like... It's, and then he's left footed, so it always just looks a wee bit better. Eh? Just like, left footed <laughs> players, just for some reason, they're just they look a wee bit more special. And uh, but I uh, just, uh, he's a really good player. And like, and then obviously, like you were touching on with Abada and stuff, like Abada should be talking to guys that come in for us because then they're two Celtic fans, so they want Celtic to do well. So by teaching Abada and giving him sort of a lessons of it, telling them how to improve and stuff, it's it can only benefit the team as a whole and it's like William said he's, he's totally grew into that captain saying that it's, it's almost been the making of him if, not like he's been poor in previous but it's almost been the making of Callum McGregor it's taken him to a different level I think and he obviously he carries on to the international scene as well and stuff it's just mm-hmm. like you but I, I just can't speak highly enough of the guy and he just off the pitches you never see him on the front pages of papers and stuff like that it's and then I don't even know if he does social media, which is nope, obviously a rarity, also. a rarity in the days, like with the days footballers and stuff. So, yeah, he's just, he, he carries himself well and he's just, he's what you want a captain to be. He's, he represents the club just perfectly for me. Yeah, 110%. And obviously the game finished 2-1. Certainly take the three points and keep the pressure on the top of the table to our nearest rivals. But you think that'll be an Anthony, wouldn't you, in terms of the whole kind of thing around that game? But I want to rewind rewind right before kickoff and the Green Brigade yes many do say certain things about them criticise them for certain things but they organised a fantastic food donation for food banks um, which they have been doing for the last 16 years and unfortunately yesterday the cops actually decided to show up and hand out fines I think for me that's an absolute disgrace it's appalling and Celtic Football Club should come out and support the fans who were doing this event organising this for people who are underprivileged within society, who have to go to food banks and even though they work, they can't afford a proper shop for the week to feed their kids, to feed their family. They were doing a good thing. They shouldn't be punished for that. Absolutely. I, cu- I couldn't agree more. And like you say, I'm, I'm not the Green Brigade's biggest mascot by any means, but um, th- this is an annual thing uh, that they organise. Um, I've been part of it myself a couple of years ago. I, I, I I thought helped that. I thought uh, take that. donations for for Fault House, uh, and we we drove through, and even that day as well, yeah, uh, pl- you know, Police Scotland's finest were uh, telling uh, us to move along with, with where our vans were parked, even though there was wasn't blocking anybody. Um, it's just a shame Police Scotland weren't as keen to enforce the law of the land um, back in March when you know a certain group of other supporters were defecating and wallowing in their own filth in George Square. But you know, it's um, it's par for the course uh, and I thought James Dornan, uh, not James Dornan uh, but, but I'll take that away John Mason's uh, disgusting uh, comments um, uh, who's the local MSP just shows you how out of touch uh, the political and policing class are uh, we, you know per- perhaps if if that guys like him were doing their jobs properly we wouldn't have to organise food bank collections um, like 100%. I say I'm, I'm not I'm not um, as I say I'm not I'm, I'm not the Green Brigade's biggest fan, but I will always uh, give credit when it's due. And, you know, thanks to those actions yesterday, um, there'll be a lot of people, uh, vulnerable people with uh, their bellies just a little bit more fuller at Christmas. So um, I, I totally take my hat off to them. Yeah, 100%. And Francis, yourself, I, I can see you nodding in agreement when I was speaking. Mm-hmm. I, f- I think 
yes, people have different conceptions, different kind of outlooks on the Green Brigade. For me, I support them 90% of the time because they're a voice. They're, they're a voice of the support. They make the atmosphere in Celtic Park. And the food bank donations, the, the way they do it, it's an annual thing, 16 years. They, they feed people yeah. around the east end of Glasgow, wherever it may be. And as Anthony said, if people like John Mason done their jobs properly, this wouldn't be a position that society has to be in. It's disgusting. It's deplorable that there are punished for trying to feed the most underprivileged families in society. Yeah, no, I was actually glad you brought it up, Stephen, because I think as a, a topic we should have been talking about, and like you say, it's been going on for 16 years, and I think that actually we're the part to fans at the weekend. I, I, I'm only going by what you read online, but they've, they've done that for four years in the trot, and this is the first year yeah. they've actually picked up fines for it. And like, I don't want to be sort of a deemed as paranoid, but is this anything to do with it? The hacking sort of the things in that? It's just, I just don't get the fact. Read, read the situation. Like, Police Scotland should be reading the situation. Obviously, the traffic wardens, I, I kind of feel, can you feel a wee bit sorry? Because they're at the end of the day, they've been instructed to do a job and then folk are videoing them. So it's, it's hard for them then not to do their job in the sense because they could then lose their job out of it. So it's, it's hard for, I, I felt sorry a wee bit for them finding their faces online doing their job at the end of the day. Whether we agree with it or not is a different one. I don't think their pictures should have been shown in, but I don't, I just think, I think Celtic really need to come out and condemn the actions of Police Scotland. Because it's, it's like you say, it is an annual thing. What they're doing, it's like Celtic's built on that kind of charitable nature. Yep. That's what Celtic, it's the foundations of Celtic. So to just, again, sit there in silence and not even release a statement just saying we, we support it. Like, I mean, I'm sort of in the middle of we used to be with the Green Brigade in the sense that I'm sort of 50-50 them, but you can't you can't fault them for, for this. This is, like you say, it's an annual, it's not been a one-off thing. They've done this year on year since they, since they formed and it's it's a good thing to do. It's horrible that they need to do it, but it's also good that they, 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 they do do it and stuff. But yeah, I think it's the fact that Celtic is the the very foundations of Celtic is built on charitable acts and feed the poor, so to speak. Although sometimes, sometimes it's not necessarily poor folk that are going to food banks these days. It's just yeah, it's the nature of society now, unfortunately. But yeah, I thought it was just police Scotland, just absolute, uh, absolute on goal for the massive, massive on goal, and, and as it stands, a massive on goal for Celtic. We continue to stay silent on the situation. And the, the most the most thing striking thing in this whole event, you guys is the the Green Brigade organised this through Celtic Football Club, so they were aware of this event, and they should come out when, whenever they should be out right now, it's releasing mm. a statement saying they're fully behind this food donation because it it helps so many underprivileged families. And another thing I want to touch upon, Anthony, obviously I wasn't aware of this until about two hours after kickoff, so I'm a wee bit naive. But Celtic, some Celtic fans groups like the boys group and the Green Brigade had a sit-in protest, obviously against the. Rumored imminent appointment of the the Bernard Higgins situation, and again, this is another thing Celtic have let linger. They've let they've let it's it's creating a poisonous atmosphere. I know you were at the the, the game, and there was a protest during the game. If I'm correct, I seen the, the white banners and stuff, and uh, it's, uh, there was a song "Stand Up If You Hate Bernard Higgins." Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. going going through yeah. Celtic Park. At, there was, yeah, and uh, amongst uh, other songs as well, uh, the usual kind of repertoire that you can imagine. <laughs> um, and, and, and there was um, a, there, there was a, a banner put up just basically saying that, you know, basically making their feelings clear on the situation. And then uh, with about 15 minutes to go, the, the Green Brigade unveiled a banner announcing that there would be a sit-in protest um, after the match, which is not, it's, which is strange because normally when it's deep, things like that, you hear about it way in advance. Maybe they were yeah. trying to do it, perhaps um, re- use the element of surprise. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really not seen a subject that I think it sort of goes. You know, Celtic is a is a massive club with a, with a huge, huge support. You know, but we're, we're a broad church. You know, we certainly don't all speak with one voice. I have, I'm, I'm really struggling to remember an issue that sort of goes goes beyond um, any sort of, you know, left and right or you know, you know, but certain views or anything. This seems to be a very unifying subject that we do not want this guy on the payroll. Um, I think obviously we put our name to the the open letter that Axom read yep. out uh, last week, and, and when you think about it, that's. All those supporters clubs, all of those uh, associations, 
they will no doubt have hundreds of members, um, but it, you know, perhaps even you know thousands who every every year pump millions of income into the club. And for all of those people, all of those different from from trusts to fan media to supporters clubs to all unite behind that one letter to say what what against us. Um, it, it, it beggars belief that it's even still being discussed that, that this guy should not be within 100 miles of Celtic Park. I can understand why Celtic are not making statements in terms of they're not wanting to fan the flame. But at the same point, it was also them that lit the fire in the first place by even considering them. Mm-hmm. Now, this is what, and, and I, I can't remember, I think it was Kevin Graham, I, I, I might be wrong, or it might have been um, Paul John that made the point on... Um, a previous Axon uh, broadcast last week when they says the, 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 the hypocrisy from Celtic's standpoint on this is Celtic themselves officially put their name against <laughs> the offensive behaviour at Football Act. I can remember and, that. And, and are, now, are now considering hiring a, a sort of chief enforcer. It's almost, it, it would be akin, I'd be trying to think about, trying to sort of put, put, give it an example. It would almost be like, and I know people might jump on and say, well, there isn't any difference between Labour and the Tories these days, which is a lot of nonsense when you when you do actually consider it. But it would be the, the, the kind of Keir Starmer winning a, an election for Labour, but then trying to make a case to have Boris Johnson as his foreign secretary. It, it would be that kind of <laughs> sort of scenario. And I, I, just, I, I don't know why Celtic think, what Celtic think they're achieving with us. I, I really don't. Um, I just hope that we're making as much noise as we can about it, that even the tone-deaf uh, Celtic board will, will finally hear us and say that they're not going to um, go ahead with the appointment. But would it surprise me if they did? Sadly not. I, don't, I think I it was Kevin that made that statement, because I think yeah. he said, you can tell a good liar when, you can tell a good uh, bad liar when they can't even remember the lie they first told. Yeah, Sorry, I think yeah. it's I, I think it's something as well. It's going to equally surprise you today. I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter. So it was surprising to me. The North Curve Celtic page confirmed that that signed letter to the the Michael Nicholson, the, the chief executive of Celtic Football Club, wasn't given a reply. And they've officiated a new type type of email template to kind of you can download it and send it across as an individual letter, tweak it ah, as you no. will. Mm-hmm. But for people who want to do that, you'll find that on Twitter in the North Curve, Celtic page, uh, Celtic Shared, Celtic Trust. You'll find it. It's out there. Get on it. Get it sent. Because, Franny, if they appoint Bernard Higgins, I can only imagine the type of reaction. Now, we've seen the, the protests that happened, obviously, during the, the lockdowns and stuff, the Ross County game, the fans. Mm-hmm. Obviously, elements of it was wrong. But, again, the majority of people were there, kind of wanted a peaceful demonstration against the Celtic board and the management team at that time. But it would it'd be ten times worse, worse in my opinion, Franny, and I, and I dread to think. I really do. I do. I, I I do worry a wee bit. Like obviously, there's nothing wrong with with peaceful protest, but will it descend to to something more if if he if he got appointed? It's just it's everything. Like just read the room. If like mm-hmm. r- just read it. How can they not see this? And obviously, what you're saying about the email thing, we all know that's because they'll be hoping it's easier for us to send a wee message to the Celtic Trust and things like that and say, look, we support this, blah, blah, blah. Easy. And then for them to deal with it, but now Celtic obviously want every individual to deal with it so it doesn't look as like it's got as much backing because some folk will be too busy to actually then send this email or stuff or, or just simply won't know about it. They'll, they'll have thought, oh, they've put their name to this and then won't know that it's not actually been dealt with. So they'll thought they've done everything they really thought they needed to do. So... It's just one of the ones you're just like sitting, just want to grab somebody in the cell and going, look, just read the room. How can you not, how can you see this? We can send this, I, like, I'm way answering the sense that they don't really need to give a statement, but just don't be con- considering the guy. And I say, I do imagine. Or, an, or, or, some, or at least, but, like, at least, like, leak it to some, like, news reporter uh, and then leak like it that way. It, how they've leaked yeah. how somebody's leaked it to say that he was getting the job. Exactly. I've never actually came out and said he was getting it, but somebody's leaked that. Somebody, somebody within Celtic's leaked that to mention his name. But it's just, it's, it's absolutely everything we don't read, need right now. Like, it, but to sort of flip it, it just shows you the good job that Poster Coggle's doing. That he's, mm-hmm. it's two separate issues right now, and I think that's what's good. That everybody's still sticking by the team. They're trying their best, the support, not to make it affect the game and not affect the team. 
but then also sticking once I've got once the timing is right, they're they're voicing their concerns on this. So it's like I say, it's just Celtic board just really need to read the room and get this distraction away before it potentially has an impact on the team, which we don't really need right now because. As we've said, it's 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 very very positive on the part of now. We just don't need off-field distractions. Nah, I and I totally hundred percent echo that. And again, I'll say to the people who's listening, I'm watching. Just if you if you just want to find the, the latest kind of email template, go on these pages: Celtic Shire, Celtic Trust, North Car- North Car Celtic page as well. It will be there. Download it, get it sent. Because I think I think as Anthony, you rightly said, I can't remember an issue. Albeit you guys have more experience in terms of back in the nineties and the eighties, mm-hmm. maybe. Maybe stretch a wee bit further from <laughs> <laughs> But th- ju- just just th- this is an, a man who, as you said, tried to bring this offensive bit football act thing. It was an absolute target against Celtic fans. We do not want him anywhere near the club. And we'll move on from that. And we'll look ahead to a lovely Europa League tie against Hearts on a Thursday evening. No, <laughs> we're back. We're back to domestic football action again against Hearts on a Thursday evening and a late night kickoff. Core date, I think that gives me a nice goosebumpy feel come up the the Christmas. And I'll come to yourself first, Franny, about this game. I mean, Hearts are sitting third on the table. They're coming off the back of a a home win against St Mirren two 0 They lost their previous game against Mullerwell two 0 But again, Hearts were the form team. At the start of the at the start of the league, they were on beaten for a while. Are they expecting a tougher, well, a tough game? Yeah, because I I expect it to be a bit physical as well. I, I think they'll they will try and upset. It's they aren't they're they're sort of a not that I'm paying too much, but when you see obviously the the scores come, they they sort of seem a wee bit Jekyll and Hyde. That's there might be one one week and lose the next. It's they're not they're not really showing that early season form now. So it's. Maybe but being at Parkhead, I'm obviously really con- like fairly confident it's got to be a positive outcome. But I think they may they may look at the model of like one of the boys at my work. He's a he's a big massive jambo and goes to the games. That he's seen they kind of play five at the back. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're adopting what Aberdeen done at the weekend. St John's have done in Livingston, where they'll just try and sit in and soak it up and stuff. And I'll be honest to try and break it down. But I I, I can't. I, I do think we'll get a a, a positive results even, but I think it, it it's got the makings to be a a tricky game because Hearts aren't a bad side at the end of the day, but the they're, they're, they're struggling to continue with their early season form. In fairness, yeah, I totally agree. And come to yourself, Anthony. I mean, Franny makes a great point. The back five. I'm actually just looking at their previous lineup, and it, it was a back five <laughs> with, with the wing backs, obviously of the of the centre backs and. They've got quite a good team when you go through it. Craig Gordon, up there with the top three goalkeepers in the league. You've got John Suter, a centre-back much football teams are after now because he's on a free. You've got Liam Boyce up front who always guarantees guarantees your goal. And Barry Mackay is like the, the kind of maverick in the team. Are you expecting a tough game coming on Thursday? I think there's there's never any love loss between Celtic and Hearts, isn't there? It's always <laughs> kind of feisty and, and physical, um, as as we all know. Uh, but so, like you say, Stephen, and, and obviously they have an experienced sort of Premiership level team. Um, Craig got, but you know, obviously we're, we're we're very happy with uh, with Joe at the moment. But you know, we should never have got rid of Craig Gordon. It was one of the many errors made uh, last season, uh, and he's shown his worth not just for club but for Scotland as well. He's um, He's been performing heroics for us through the World Cup qualifying campaign. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely going to be a tough game. There's there's no doubt about it. But hopefully we've got our, uh, our shooting boots tied up a bit better and uh, we can get a result because, as we as we all know, there are few things better in life than scudding the minis. So, here's... <laughs> 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 spe- speaking of scudding the minis, Anthony, I'll come to you quick fire here, line up and score predictions. <laughs> Uh, so back four, I think it'll, it'll just be the, the same as yesterday. I, I would imagine. Um, I think you you might see um, James Forrest uh, come in on on the right hand side, just that bit more experienced. And, um, and dare I say, he's not a physical player, but just that you know he can, he can that close control. Um, left hand side, Jota. It's a toss up between McCarthy and and Beaton. To, to to be honest, um, I really don't know. I think. Possibly he'll go. He'll, he'll resort to type and, and have beat on in there, and um, McGregor Turnbull, and I think uh, up front obviously Kyogo as well. I don't think there'll be too many changes. Um, 
but yeah, I can perhaps see James Forrest uh, coming in again. Um, but you know, uh, and Beaton just brings you that little bit more uh, physicality than McCarthy. But you're hoping, like I say, that, uh, that we can do the business on Thursday night. What was your score prediction then? Oh, t- uh, sorry, Steve, uh, but, uh, score prediction as well. Um, I'm going to, uh, Franny's going to be raging because I always steal his score. I'm going to go for another. That's all free, 2 0. And Franny, same again to you, line up, score prediction. I think the, the line up will be much the same as uh, yesterday, but I think I'm in agreement. I think Forrest will come in. I think McCarthy will, will, will keep his spot because I don't think he actually I've, he played, okay, played okay. Never done. I can't remember him really doing anything wrong, so I don't see a reason for not to play him unless it's just a fitness thing. I don't know where Beaton is with fitness, and I don't know if Rogic. I know he said Rogic will feature, but I can't really see him coming in from the start and playing maybe McGregor, uh, Tumble, and uh, Rogic, or even dropping Tumble for Rogic. So I, I think the midfield three for me will be McCarthy, um, McCarthy, McGregor, and Tumble. As I say, the only change I can see from. Sunday's team is Forrest coming in for a badder. And I'll mm. go for a, a, a hassle free 3 1, but two goal advantage. Two goal advantage <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a quick side note, obviously, before they bring it to the end of the show, James McCarthy, I did forget about it there, obviously, during the podcast. I, I do apologize, mm. it's a bit ignorant mm. of myself, but coming to yourself, Anthony, I mean, for me, he didn't really do much. I mean, he'd done the simple things well. I get what people said up, but he, he's, he's definitely a flashy player. Like, I think Beaton. He does the more penetrative passes, kind of upfield, where McCarthy side to side, or he went back a few times. The crowd started moaning. I noticed he slowed play down enough of that. Do you think that he can be relied upon being the number one defensive midfielder? I think time will tell. Obviously, that I think as Francis said, that fitness seems to be the, the, the sort of bigger issue uh, rather than anything else. Um, but yeah, like as like you said, I don't think he did necessarily anything. Wrong yesterday, but perhaps somewhat of what Neil Lennon used to get when it when he played for Celtic. There would be times when the fans would get on his back mm-hmm. just for doing what he's what he normally Good does. That. Um, and it, it of course he did put the through ball through that ended up, you know, we got the rebound off for the second goal. So I don't know if that counts as an assist or not. Probably not. <laughs> but um, uh, um, but yeah, as Francis says, as I say, I, I think he, he he might go beat on depending on fitness. But it, by the same token, it wouldn't surprise me if he if he did feature as well uh, on Thursday. And and what's your opinion on McCarthy then, Francis? I, I, as I say, I thought he played played okay in, in Sunday. Like nothing, nothing you've got to rave about. But it's uh, equally, I'm, I'm not sitting going, oh, but when he done this, like he, he gave the ball away here. Like I, I can't really pin him doing anything, anything that really upset. He's like he's not the player that he was at Hamilton. Like the box to box player, he's he's a lot older now. He's not got to be that type of player. There's there's no doubt in his talent. He has a he has a proper bot player. But it's just it's similar to Michael Johnson, but just at different ends of their career. Really, it's just the fitness issue at the end of the day. But there's no doubt in the boy's got ability. It's just getting it in a consistent level now with fitness. Really, I I mean it still baffles me how I got a four year contract with 31. Yeah. I mean you spo- I mean you both can tell that I'm quite not on the McCarthy bandwagon. <laughs> But again, I've been proved wrong so many times. Ralston, the prime example. And again, Ross called me out in that. Never forgive him, never forgive him for that. But, oh, he absolutely like, done you, man. Uh, you he, he toast. Done me. Absolutely uh, in toast, man. He, he destroyed me. But look, that brings us to the end of the show. But the quiz returns. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Hopefully it's better than me and Anthony's previous attempt at the quiz. <laughs> oh, God. I, 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 it was awful. Absolutely I awful the last time I was on. So I was. I you saw the crack, don't you? Five questions, yeah. first to three. Yeah. Right? Five questions. Here we go. <sighs> How many points are sat off top spot? Four. Four. Franny won. Yes. One nil, Francis. <laughs> In the lineup against Aberdeen, there was three academy graduates. Can you name them? McGregor, Mikey Johnson, Callum Welsh. McGregor, Ed Alston. Two 0 Franny. Oh, in the line, in the lineup, the starting lineup. Oh, the lineup. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Right, let's go down here. Like, you can win this now. Aberdeen featured three ex Celtic players of their team. Can you name them? Johnny Hayes, Scott Johnny Brown, Hay. Dylan McGeoch. Oh, he's from oh, Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> well done! Well done! Go that on, was on, actually... on, on, on. That was brilliant, Franco. Well done. <laughs> so, yeah. 
he's, his, he's got I, the... I'm getting Johnny Hayes' assist on Sunday. <laughs> 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 he, he's printed out A4 pages of Aberdeen. Look, they stuck it on the uh, wall. Uh, uh, yeah, so. so no, that's if we didn't know the hotel <laughs> since I got back. <laughs> <laughs> and again, people who are listening to watching, Manscaped, our show sponsors, they've been, they've been really kind to us and they're trying to be really kind to you. 20% off. Christmas gift for the family, for friends, for anybody really, anyone you think of, anyone who's close to you. I mean, we've all took advantage of it. I've, I mean, my balls have, thank me. They're nice and fresh. The, the ball, <laughs> the ball, the old one. Anthony, if, if you took advantage of any of these lovely gifts, uh, but I, I love my free packet. I'm not going to lie. It was a lovely wee gift for Manscaped uh, for his start off. Uh, yep, I'll have my mine packed in my hold all for Saturday night. For the Christmas <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that the way secrets play, and then obviously, <laughs> Franny. We all know William's favorite is the, the ball chafer, stops the chafing. Yeah. What about yourself? I mean, I, I like the boxers because see, after you've just done the business and that nice silky boxers, they feel, oh. they feel great, they feel great once you've yeah. done, it, done it. Yeah, and as all, as, and as always, folks, your balls will thank you. And, and again, <laughs> on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll be notified when you go live. We appreciate everyone's support. We have a, a growing fan base and we're absolutely loving it. And to my show regulars, Anthony and Franny, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been good, Steve. Absolutely. It's, good. Yeah, it's always good getting back on and obviously we'll be, uh, as I say, we've got a lot on this week. We've got a big game oh. and obviously we're recording, we're recording our content for Axom's Charity Weekender, which we're absolutely delighted to be a part of. Ah, so, so uh, yeah, looking forward Amazing. to us recording that. And then uh, obviously it's the big one on Saturday night. So I'll see you there next time I... Uh, <laughs> A chat with these um, uh, could be slightly delicate from the <laughs> <laughs> and until next time stay well and keep safe hail hail <laughs>